friends, it's Cassandra from the blog, becomingafarmgirl.com. Do you love carrot cake? Me too. In this video, I'll show you how you can get the flavor and texture of carrot cake in a rich, mildly addictive, spreadable jam that will give you all of the unmistakable warm and fuzzy carrot cake vibes you can handle. This jam has an immense amount of flavor, so it tastes like a really complicated recipe. But it's not. You'll be using it not only as a dessert spread, but at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm not exaggerating. I'm being perfectly serious right now. So before I take you step by step through making and canning this recipe in a 10 minute water bath, let me show you all of the uses you'll get from making this jam. Let's start with breakfast. Switching your regular toppings with carrot cake jam is a great way to freshen up your favorites. Case in point, cinnamon rolls, an easy breakfast treat. Sure, you can use standard icing, but if you want a new spin on a family favorite, this jam does just that. It still gives you that savory glaze goodness, but with the twist of the subtle citrus zing and deeply moist taste you get from carrot cake. Pair your rolls with a cup of coffee and know that no matter how the rest of your day goes, you've just won the morning. Your regular syrup doesn't stand a chance when carrot cake jam makes its debut. Prepare your waffles and pancakes using your normal recipe, but this time introduce carrot cake jam as your topping of choice. The rich textured goodness it'll impart will leave your family, guests, and spouse asking for more. Carrot cake jam paired with the battered goodness of pancakes and waffles and even bagels really brings out the whole carrot cake experience together, making everything you love about the cake now available in breakfast form. Now let's move on to lunch. First on the menu is goat cheese and bacon stuffed chicken breast glazed with, yup, carrot cake jam. The end result gives you a savory, moist filling, and the way the warming spices from the nutmeg, cinnamon, honey, and brown sugar will use truly complements the bits of bacon that we'll add. After you've stuffed and tucked the filling into the breast, brown them for several minutes before baking them to finish cooking. This is where I love using my cast iron because it easily transitions from the stove top to the oven. Rest or finish cooking, spread on your savory carrot cake jam, which is the crowning moment of epic goodness in this easy recipe. Now I must tell you that the first bite of this is more than a flavor. It's a feeling, because you need to prepare for the warmth from the herbed goat cheese with unexpected bits of real bacon and moist chicken, alongside the sweet hearty thickness of the jam glaze. Oh, and in this batch I also added a few walnuts, so it also had a bit of a crunch. Oh, I, oh, it's so good. It's, uh, oh, that was so delicious. Now you know if this jam works with chicken, it definitely goes with ham. Give a weeknight or weekend dinner extra pizzazz and you add carrot cake jam on top of baked ham. This jam uses crushed pineapple and pears, which are fruits already known to complement this meat, along with the savory seasonings I mentioned earlier. about whether or not I'll ever go back to using a regular glaze again. And when you try this recipe, you'll know what I mean. Another dinner idea is to take a pork roast and stuff it with this delicious jam. It'll keep things moist, infuse flavor, and eliminates the hassle of slicing, chopping, or fussing with multiple ingredients. The end result is excellent. Why choose between ice cream or cake when you can have them both? This jam was born to be an ice cream topping, and it's even better once you've made it yourself. And if you need a quick 
quick snack, try one of my favorites. Take graham crackers and spread them with peanut butter. Next, add a spoonful of this jam on top. There is something that is pure perfection about the crunch from the graham cracker, the thick nut butter, and the sweetness from the jam that'll touch your heart. To truly take things over the top, pour yourself a glass of milk. Hopefully my sharing of how I use this jam will give you your own ideas. There are tons more. Now let's get to this recipe, but stay posted because in a couple of minutes I'm going to give you my recipe tips. This includes how I source the recipe, canning safety, and other tips and recommendations. Lastly, if this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog, becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm a homestead dreamer that shares how you can live a farm fresh life without land or livestock. I love sharing kitchen gardening and canning recipes, so don't worry about writing anything down. I'll include the link to the printable recipe. Now let's get started. Start with cleaning your carrots by giving them a good rinse. And for best flavor and texture that results in a sweeter, less earthy taste, peel your carrots. I encourage you not to discard your peels. I like to repurpose mine to flavor my stalks and broths by keeping them in an airtight bag to freeze until I need them. Next, use a grater to shred your carrots. You'll do this by pressing the carrot against the metal surface of the grater, applying pressure and sliding up and down in repeated motions to grate. Add your carrots to a heavy bottom pot. Next, add your pears, which have large amounts of natural pectin. I'm using my home canned pears, which are already marinating in cinnamon and vanilla. The aromatics when I opened this jar immediately brought back memories of my mom and I canning them last year. I drained off some of the juice to fold in later. Now we'll add crushed pineapple, which imparts not only sweetness, but also gives a tender texture and subtle chewy quality and body to your jam. Add in freshly squeezed lemon juice to add brightness to the dish. I prefer to use a Meyer lemon, which leans on the sweeter side while still imparting a citrus flavor that isn't sour tasting. Move your pot to the stove and warm over medium high heat. Now it's time to add our warming spices. We'll be using cinnamon, cloves, cardamom, and a dash of ginger. Bring everything to a boil, stirring to fully integrate. And might I add that this is where things start to smell delicious. When your ingredients reach a boil and have broken down a bit, remove your pan from the heat. Pour in your pectin and give things a good stir to ensure it completely dissolves. Now let's add chopped dates. I prefer to pulse my dates, which will easily allow them to meld into the full body of the jam, as opposed to a chunkier, chewier jam if you decide not to. As long as you're using small, diced-sized dates, and even raisins, this is truly your choice. Now add the brown sugar. And honey, stirring to incorporate until your sweeteners are completely dissolved. Turn the heat to medium high to allow things to fully boil, again for uh, about one minute. Continue to stir frequently to avoid sticking, but if things get too foamy, add a pat of butter. All right, so while our jam is coming to a boil on the stove, I wanted to insert some quick recipe tips. I'd like to start by sharing that I take safe canning practices very seriously. And so I only use recipe methods that have been published by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, the National Center for Home Food Preservation, and companies like Ball and Bernardin. The recipe that I'm sharing with you today is one that I adapted from the Blue Ribbon Canning Book of Jams, Preserves, Pickles, Sauces, and more from Linda Ament. 
This is one of the many books that I keep in my kitchen and I highly recommend purchasing this book. You can easily find this book on Amazon and I've included a link below. I'll be canning a lot of recipes from this book. So I adapted this recipe by using three cups of honey and three cups of brown sugar instead of the six and a quarter cups of granulated sugar uh, that this recipe recommends. And substituting honey and brown sugar is absolutely safe per all of the canning guidelines. And I like to do this because I prefer the nuanced sweetness flavor that you get from combining your sweeteners rather than just using kind of flat white sugar and the honey that I used was from a local beekeeper which was peach flavored and oh just really took this recipe over the top I also added just a pinch of cardamom to this recipe because it's a spice that already plays well with the other warming spices that this recipe includes, like the cinnamon and the cloves and nutmeg. Also, when you go to can this recipe, consider who you may be sharing this with. And so you may wanna leave the nuts out of some of your jars. But if you're doing this, be sure to clearly write on your label with nuts or without nuts. Now, this is your first time canning with nuts. This also leads me to my next point, uh, that according to the National Center for Home Food Preservation, canning with nuts has been determined as safe. It is not recommended that you can, say, just an entire jar of nuts as one ingredient. You'll also notice that I used a jar of my own home canned pears in this recipe, and they were already marinating in uh, vanilla and brown sugar and a bit of honey, and I encourage you to fold in in some of your own uh, home can ingredients into recipes like this where the flavor will really shine through. Also, if you're new to water bath canning and you don't have a dedicated water bath canner, which is absolutely fine, all you need to do is make sure that you're using a uh, some type of rack to separate the jars from hitting the bottom of your pot. But one thing that I also recommend if you're new to water bath canning is to use a lid like the one that I will get ready to show you in a bit, um, is to use a clear glass lid. And it's just nice to be able to easily glance and see your jars as they're processing. All right, I hope these tips helped. Now let's jump back into the recipe. Your jam will initially appear thinner than the fully set version I showed you earlier in the video. This is perfectly fine. The setting time varies and could take up to 24 hours. There's no need to worry. Now let's can this recipe, but first be sure to sterilize your jars by either running the jars on a quick clean or a sterilization cycle in your dishwasher before placing them on a dish towel. Grab your funnels and ladle that jam goodness into the jars, leaving a quarter inch headspace. Remove any air bubbles by running a long plastic or wooden skewer between the jar and the jam. If you're adding walnuts to select cans of your jam, now's the time. Next, wipe the rims of your jars with vinegar to remove any spillage, which can prevent your jars from creating a seal. Using new lids, secure the rings to the top of your jars until they are fingertip tight, secured, but air still has room to pass through. Using a jar rack or plate, lower the jars into the boiling water of your water bath canner. Pour in more water to ensure that the water covers at least an inch above your jars and place the lid on your pot. Bring water to a full boil for 10 minutes, then use a jar lifter to remove the jars out of the water and let them cool on a towel undisturbed for a minimum of 12 to 24 hours. As your jars cool, you'll hear them making these clicking pops. Leave the jars undisturbed on a towel for 12 to 24 hours. After that, you can confirm that the jars have sealed by removing the rings. A sealed jar lid will remain secured to the jar without the rim and be slightly indented in the center. If you have any jars that didn't seal properly, just store them in the fridge and use them within three months. Your sealed jars will keep for the next year. If you enjoy this jam and all the many uses you'll get from it, you've got to check out my orange marmalade recipe. And to get more canning recipes and tips, join me here weekly. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care. So let me taste it and see, because that's what it's all about, exactly. the taste test. Yes. Get a nut in there too. One of the walnuts.
This is very sweet. I'm trying to figure out what it tastes like, though. Mmm. What about the texture? It's, oh, it's good. Yeah, the texture's really good, too, right? It's, yeah. it's chewy. It's not. It's more than just a syrup. You're... I need me some biscuits. <laughs> Anybody got some biscuits? <laughs> oh, this is good, Cass. Yeah, that I told you. This oh. is good. Yeah. You have all those notes of like yeah. the cardamom, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, you have the pineapple pineapple that's in there. What else did I throw in there? Um, I have honey, brown sugar. Yeah. This is sweet. Yeah. This it, is for, really sweet. For sure. I can see is. this going on a cake. Oh, Not just absolutely. carrot cake. I mean just a pound cake. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is good. 